Aisha with us and we are now joined by consumer expert Lisa Webb as we're going to be telling you how you can save money on your car insurance. We'd love you to call in. If you've got any question on this, perhaps you're wondering why your premium's gone up recently. Are you a pensioner that's worried you're being penalised despite never having claimed? Give us a call on 0207 862 and we'll try and answer your queries. Christo, we know you're a driver now. <laughs> <laughs> rev, rev, rev. <laughs> I did, quite frankly, the way you describe your driving habits, I'm surprised you, you can even get insurance get at all. I actually have over 20 years of no claims bonus. Thank you very much. Well indeed. done. Okay. And, um, but, yeah, I, I think car insurance is the biggest scam going. I think that it is absolute legalised discrimination, the way in which they can make gross negative generalisations about, uh, about the uh, uh, characteristics that you have. And I think that the absolute hassle you have to go through in order to get a similar premium to the year before, it's just so unnecessary. This year, in order to get the same premium, even though I'd had no claims, I had to change insurers and then my old insurer came back to me and said, oh, actually, we will do it cheaper and let you pay every month. That is a common experience, isn't yeah. it? Your, your premium goes up, you kick up a fuss, shop around, take your price back, and before you know it, you're given a price that was not too far off what you paid last year. What on earth is going on? Yeah, absolutely. And, and we always say shop around, haggle where you can. Um, but the thing is, there are rules in place that say, you know, you're not allowed to just whack someone's existing premium up because they're an existing customer. There are these things called loyalty penalties that are banned across insurance products generally. Um, but it is it is something that we're seeing a lot. And car insurance costs are, there's no easy way to say it, it's really expensive to insure and, your cars. And days. going up. We know that that's a statistical. OK, they're not going up in this, like this loyalty premium way where they'll creep it up every year. But across the board, they seem they are going up. It's, yeah, it's absolutely. They're, they're going up a lot. Um, and uh, the Association of British Insurers, uh, they're laying a lot of the blame here at the feet of the costs of repairs. Um, although if anyone read, there was an article in The Guardian this morning talking about the fact that uh, we're seeing in increases of sort of 25% on your car insurance, but actually some of the statistics based on how much it costs to actually repair a car isn't anywhere near that. There are, of course, other costs to consider. You know, the cost of everything has increased over the last couple of years. So we know that everything is contributing to this. But a 25% increase for most people um, on their car insurance for 23 compared to 22. It, it's a lot of money. I mean, is this down to the nature of cars as well? Cars have become more expensive. We now have electric vehicles or hybrids, so they're more complex as well. Is that where some of that added, if we're to, to believe what insurers are saying, is that where a lot of that added cost comes from? To some extent, yeah. Electric vehicles do appear to be very expensive to repair. The repair of a battery can come to thousands of pounds. So we do know that more complex vehicles are just more expensive to, to repair if things do go wrong. Equally, software goes wrong sometimes. Um, I, I had a colleague who had a, a car that a keyless entry. He didn't charge the battery or he left the windows or the lights open, can't remember what it was, but he couldn't get into the vehicle to be able to jump it, charge it, nothing. He just couldn't access it anymore and it cost him a fortune to get someone out to fix that. So just to be clear, if my insurer comes back with a hiked premium but I can get a quote which demonstrates that a new customer to them is getting a much better premium than that. That's something I should kick up a fuss about. Absolutely, you should. And actually, we did some research at Witch not that long ago, and we saw that people who were pretending to be new customers were getting a better deal than or being offered a better price than the price they were being offered as an existing customer. So it means that those rules that are in place, the new regulations came in in 2022 that says you're not allowed to penalise people. It does look like they're not being enforced particularly well particularly if we're seeing people saying, well, actually, I can get a better deal if I pretend to be new. And it's a fairly simple check to make, isn't it? You just go in fresh, different email address, get that quote, and you can compare what you've got. Absolutely. I, we've got loads of calls coming in. Okay. So I want to make sure we get as many as we can. Uh, Joanne's in Lancashire. Uh, tell us about your, your car premiums. Have they shot up? Can you understand why? What's happening? Uh, I don't know why it has. Hello, everybody. Hey, uh, I'm actually online now trying to sort car insurance funnily enough. Now, my renewal from last year is £361 and 
this year, going through the comparison sites, it's £181, £280 different. Oh, hang on, it's three minus one is two. £280 different. Good grief. So this is the difference between the renewal you've been quoted by your current insurer and what you can, yeah. and what you can see other insurers are offering you. For um, exactly the same cover. So, I mean, what have you done, Joanne? Have you taken that price back to your insurer and say, hey, I can do much no. better, you've got, to, you've got to help me here? No, no, because they won't drop it by that much. Is I know it, they won't. Is it worth trying, Lisa, the no-switch switch, where you stay with the same people but bid them down? Always worth trying. And it's always worth threatening to walk as well, say, you know, I, I'm, I'm not keen on this, this is too much, I'm seeing a better price elsewhere. What you want to do is get through to a retentions team. Um, and you and I, actually, we did a piece on this a while back where we were getting people through to retentions teams and saving them loads of money. So it does work. I would say be persistent. Another thing I would say, be polite. I think sometimes people think they have to be really forceful and aggressive when they're on the phone to their insurance providers or anyone. But actually, if you, there's research that suggests that if you smile when you're speaking to someone on the phone, you're actually likely to get a better outcome. Honey is sweeter than vinegar. Exactly. <laughs> um, Joanne, I wonder if that's worth a go. Go back and, and, and what just say, I need to speak to the retentions department. Be upfront and say, I'm thinking of leaving. That might get you through to the people you actually need to speak to who can do the very best deal. Wish you the best of luck, Joanne. Um, I hope you get a better premium than uh, you currently have. And, you know, it's a lot less hassle to stick with the same insurer if you can do it. Susan's in Somerset. What's happening, Susan? Are you uh, experiencing a, a massive hike in your premiums? How's it going? Uh, yes, um, for my husband, basically. He's been diagnosed with cancer and also heart failure. And I stupidly, when I found this out, I cancelled the car insurance because I thought he's not going to drive again. And uh, then my daughter-in-law and my son also said that you need it for third party and fire theft. So I re um, redid the insurance again in a space of two to three days. It went up from £36 to £75. And I explained the situation, but there was nothing coming back from them. I mean, this sounds very much, Lisa, like what Christo was saying about discrimination, effectively. They have to make a decision based on, on risk, don't they, about how much they're going to charge you and how likely it is there's, there's going to be a, a, an accident. But this does feel really, really hard when you've got a policy and then suddenly it changes so much. This sounds like a really shocking example. You're right, there are rules around discrimination. So since 2012, for example, car insurers have not been allowed to uh, offer premiums based on someone's gender. It's it's banned uh, thanks to a ruling from the ECJ. We we now can't have any decisions based on, based on gender, but there are situations where risk can be assessed based on something that might be uh, a factor that could otherwise be considered discriminatory, like age or or illness or disability, okay. and that's based on whether or not it impacts your risk profile. But in this case, it feels like a two-day window and the price going up that much. It, it feels like a real chance there. Yeah. So I would definitely in seek to look into that a bit further. Can I just ask, if, can, can you, is there an ombudsman for insurance that people could take a complaint if they think, for example, in this case, it's an unfair discriminatory ruling? Yeah, so um, insurance is a financial product. So you would go to the financial ombudsman and the oh. financial ombudsman can look into this for you. There is a regulator as well, the Financial Conduct Authority, the FCA, and the regulator will be interested to hear about these things too. But in the first instance, go to the FOS, the Financial Ombudsman Service. OK, we've got a very limited time left. Very quickly, if people are looking for their insurance today, we had so many calls we couldn't take, unfortunately. What should they be doing? So compare, compare, compare. The other thing I would say that insurance, there is a sweet spot when you want to renew insurance. So 15 to 29 days before your insurance premium kicks in again, that's when you're likely to get the cheapest because the closest you get to, to the date where you renew, the more likely you are to be desperate. And that's when you're likely to get the rubbish offers. And that box that says auto renew, Untick, never right. auto renew never let an auto renew happen because ultimately you're going to get stung with a higher price you will have 14 days to cancel if you notice but it's really important to stay on top read your policies i know they're so boring but please read them <laughs> they really are boring but it's worth it's like checking being that, the worst it? possible kind of relationship it, it is. really is it is you want to untick that yeah, box straight away with, with those as well um yeah definitely in a breakdown cover something i've been through recently do not auto renew your breakdown cover if you can possibly help it that would be my big bit of advice because that auto renew can be absolutely shocking once 14 days are up 
it's too late. Thank you so much for joining us, Lisa. Thanks for it's having me. Fabulous. And guys, thank you as well. Thank you for all your calls. Um, Christo, Aisha, we'll see you again very soon, no doubt. Jeremy is back at 9.15 tomorrow morning. Have a wonderful afternoon. I'll see you tomorrow as well. See you then.